Hey everybody, welcome to the Team Engage call for the for March 16th, I believe. Um, I'm really excited to have everyone here. Greg and the rest of the team are actually on a cruise ship, finishing up their cruise, the SS Beach Body. Um, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit tonight. Uh, my name is Greg Short. I am uh, Greg's, I think, sixth coach. So I'm like two spots under him. It's, it's kind of, I've been around for a while. May 1st is my start date. But today we wanna talk about uh, really how we can get through struggles and challenges. Because I can tell you, all those people are on a cruise right now, and I actually earned that cruise, and I'm not there. So we're, we'll get to that. So I want to start with really talking about where we come from, our, our story, and share a little bit about myself to kind of give you an example of, you know, there is no, there isn't, you should never count anybody out because it really is, we're all so special in our own way. Now, I like to, I don't like to talk about it, but it really has helped me grow as a person as I've talked about it. And Beachbody has really helped me talk about this because I would tell you when I started May 1st of 2011, I wouldn't be able to share what I'm about to share with you guys. So my first memory growing up, and I'm going way back, uh, I just had my 40th birthday, so some of you are going, that's not old, and it really isn't. Um, <laughs> some of you are probably going, yeah, you are old. But when I was two or three, my first memory was of my father um, leaving the house. He moved out, my parents got a divorce, and I, you know, that was my first memory. My second memory is actually of my mom being taken to, uh, taken to the, the mental institution. She has schizophrenia. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is when, when my dad was gone, he moved to another state. My mom was in the hospital. I was taken to friends and family uh, homes to stay with them. So, um, so it was, it, and I stayed with really, really good homes. Um, never had any of the the issues that you hear the the stories and whatnot. And I give the families that I stayed with a lot of credit for who I am today. But what it built was a life of instability for myself. I was really. I couldn't count on anyone. I, the only person I could count on was myself. And so I started building up walls. And one time when I was about seven or eight, something happened to me and it shut down. And even at my uh, high school reunion, I was talking to a friend, an elementary school friend um, that I knew all through high school. And he said, something happened to you. You were, you were fun loving, you were caring, you were, you were outgoing and then something happened and you shut down. And it really was a, my brother's, one of my brother's friends, he, he took me into a back room and he, he sexually assaulted me several times. And this all built up walls for me. And it was really, really hard. And I'm a softie. So if I cry, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> At that point, you know, I was still being moved around and I kept building up walls and I kept building the walls up. We grew up on welfare. We had no, next to no money. Um, Christmas was very sparse and all of these things. And I went through high school and one of my friends, she, I actually went on a date with her that she doesn't remember. But she said, you weren't shy in high school, Greg. You were painfully shy. And so I really learned to just shut down and not talk to anybody. Now, as I somehow, my wife, my high school sweetheart, she, she invited me over. Um, we were both really quiet. We, we hit it off because we didn't have to be outgoing. And that was, that was great for me at the time. I went into computers as 
16 years uh, IT field, which I have now retired from. But it was great because I could sit in that dark room in the corner and not talk to anybody unless it was about computers. Then I could talk to them. And it, it, was, it was a passion of mine was the computers and, and whatnot. And it really helped me keep those walls up. Fast forward to 2011, when I didn't know what I wanted for my 35th birthday. I just knew I was out of shape. And I had actually <laughs> said to my wife, I said, this is what I'm going to be, 35, 30 pounds overweight. I've been going to the gym. I plateaued for six months, and I ordered P90X. And I started doing it, and I felt really good. I felt really good. I got some pretty good results. And Greg asked me, hey, have you ever thought about what, doing what I'm doing? And I told him no. But for those that are coaches of Greg, he's, uh, he, he knows how to talk you into it and help you see that vision. And it was really, it was really hard for me at first because I had built up all these walls. But I started knocking those walls down because you can't do this business by yourself. The team is there to help you grow and build. And that's helped me be a new person. It really has. These last five years have grown, have built me up, have strengthened me. And I can say that this business has been amazing for me on a personal, social aspect. Now, today we're going to be talking about being knocked down and getting through struggles because I have been doing this for five years. Most of the time it's been part time. Um, and I've gone through some, some struggles through this. One of the reasons I've ended my 16 year IT career is that I got laid off twice while being a beach body coach. The first time I was laid off, I was like, maybe I should seriously look at the beach body thing because you never know what's going to ha happen. So I started growing the business more. And then second time I got laid off and first, just so you know, first, the first time company ran itself into the ground, the second time sales were slow and I was the low man on the totem pole. So there was nothing that I could do barring going out and making sales to not get laid off that I was really just tired of being, letting my future being decided by other people. So Beachbody was something that has allowed me to be able to stay home with my wife. Now those layoffs, they were very emotionally draining and I didn't handle them very well to be completely honest. And we're gonna talk about some steps that we can do to make sure when things get hard, cause they will, nothing is perfect. We want it to be a straight line and it's more of the, this is our life, squiggly to where we wanna go. And so we're gonna talk about that. Um, one thing that I did mention is I am not on the cruise. I was, I earned the cruise. I had everything paid for, had the airfare, hotel, and it just kind of all went away. But that is because of my why. And we're going to, we're going to get to, get to the why. And because it becomes so, so important of what we need to do to make sure that we are staying strong in those times that are really, really hard. So I'm gonna share my screen here, which I should have already done, but. Uh... So this, this is uh, my, my family here, my uh, high school son, my wife of 21 years, and my, my college daughter. And it's strange to say that, but I love her. Um, and this was, this is some of my results. I'm, I'm fairly happy with them. So. <laughs> Slide two. So like I said, we're going to be knocked down no matter what we do. We can have the best laid out plans and those plans are going to be thrown out the windows. They're challenges 
that are going to keep us going. Because if we're not being challenged, just like when you're doing a workout, if you're not pushing yourself, increasing your weight, jumping a little bit harder or higher, walk, moving faster, if you're not doing that, you are not progressing. And life is the same way. Like the quote here, sometimes you have to get knocked down lower than you've ever been just to stand taller than you ever were. As Sean T says, you have to go down to go back up. And it really is those things that are going to make you a better person. Now, I, I just watched this movie, and the whole time I watched this, I was just going, this is life. The, if you haven't seen The Martian, um, basically this, this man gets stuck on Mars, and everyone leaves thinking he's dead. And all he can focus on is what is the next thing that I need to do. He doesn't look at the whole situation and how hopeless it is, how he's going to survive. All he can do is focus on what is the next step? What is it that I'm going to do to make sure that I'm going to survive or be successful? Because in most cases, Beachbody is not a life or death situation for us. So if you have a chance to watch this movie or watch it again, make sure you're watching for, for those things of what he has to do. He doesn't focus on everything. He focuses on one thing. And that's really, I feel like, a key of getting out of these trying times that knock us down, that keep us from moving forward. So the first thing that we want to talk about is your why. So Fred, Frederick, oh man, I even looked up how you pronounce his last name and I'm not going to do it because I'll slaughter it. Um, just Let's just say I'm not German. Uh, he, he who has a why can bear almost any how. We're going to be asked how are we going to get over something? How are we going to accomplish making success club? How are we going to accomplish reaching out to people, getting out of our comfort zones. Now I can tell you my why. I have, a, I have an 18 year old college daughter that she does have some scholarships, but those scholarships don't last forever. I have a 14 year old son that is becoming a man and I have to be there for him. I can tell you five years ago, I looked in the mirror and I wasn't happy with who I saw. I asked myself, how can my wife love me? I mean, it was emotionally draining on me to look in the mirror. I didn't like it. I don't have very many pictures. I think I have a total of like 12 pictures in a 10 year span from my late 20s to, you know, 35. It's crazy. But knowing what my why is and knowing that your why can change depending on where you're at in life. Everyone's why is different. That's where my why was. When I signed up to be a coach, my why was, hey, I'm going to make a few extra dollars. That was my complete why. As it's grown, as I've been able to help people, I actually had a team member that messaged me yesterday, and she's like, Greg, I have to cancel my Shakeology. My husband just lost his job. I'm so sorry because I know this affects you and I know this is your income. And I just reached out to her and I said, don't worry about that. That's not why I do this. It is to make money and support my family, but it's to make sure that you're successful on your journey. And that's my why is to help those people. And my why is to be here with my wife to make sure that I can help her get through her health issues. As I was telling some people before, she has Lyme's disease. They believe she's had it for probably over 20 years before I knew her. And that, that involves a 10 to 12 year plan of antibiotics and different supplements to help her get over that. And she can't do it alone. And I need to make sure that I'm here for her. And being able to work from home has 
given me that ability to give her the support that she's going to need. Now we do have a, a European trip planned in 10 to 12 years when she's, when she's able to travel, but that's really having that why and know why I get on Facebook and I message and I follow up is amazing because I know that tomorrow is up to me to be able to be successful to support my family. So having that why is the first thing. You've heard people say, say it, and if you haven't, you, you should. Your why should make you cry. It should be emotionally and mentally part of you. So when you talk to your team members, when you talk to someone and say, have you ever thought about doing what I'm doing? And they say, well, why do you do it? What is your goal? Have that why there. Make sure that it's both emotionally, but have a financial side to it also. So, when, so they can see it because when you have that whole why, they can see that it's not just emotional, that there's a financial side to it because it is a business and you don't know who you're going to be reaching. So make sure your why has those, those things, the emotional have a physical transformation why and have a financial why. Whether that's, hey, I just don't want to pay for my Shakeology. Whether that's, I need to make sure that, uh, or I want to buy a car for my, my teenage daughter. Whether it's, I want to go on a trip with my wife when she gets better. Or if it's, I just need to be there for her. Make sure you have that why. And I challenge you, if you haven't looked at your why in the last month, Reread it. Make sure you have it written out. So the next thing is sharing your, your vulnerabilities. When you're going through these struggles, there are people that are out there that want to help you. It may feel uncomfortable. It may feel hard. But I can tell you that, it, that people are out there and they will relate to you the struggles that you're having, the heartaches that you're going through, it makes you a real person. We tend to post on Facebook and Instagram all the perfect things. Oh, I did my workout. I'm so exhausted. Here's my, my sweaty selfie. But when we're going through these troubling times and letting people know, hey, I'm still doing my sweaty selfies and I'm having these hard things. Don't make it all about that. But there's nothing wrong with sharing those issues of, hey, I earned a cruise and I don't get to go on it. But I can tell you, today I signed up a coach. He wouldn't have signed up today because I would be on a boat. Now, he would have signed up uh, this weekend. But the, the point is, is there's value in everything that we do. And knowing that we go through struggles makes us relatable makes us and makes us being able to you know what greg isn't perfect he does have donuts he does have a cake and ice cream it isn't all workout all 100 percent nutrition all the time so make sure you share those vulnerabilities those issues that you have um, one of the top coaches, he, he told us, he said, never let a hurt go unused. Make sure that you share those. So, so valuable. The next thing is learning from our, our trials, taking a step back. This is really important when it comes to journaling. I don't know how many of you will write down how you did on a day. You know, doing an account, a personal accountability becomes really, really important. Hey, today I reached out to X amount of people. This person said no because of this reason. This person needed more information. I don't know about that. Let's go out and ask the team. Let's do those things. Now, people say knowledge is power. But as Tony Robbins says here, contrary to pro pro Popular wisdom, knowledge is not power. It's potential pow power. Knowledge is not mastery. Execution is mastery. Execution will trump knowledge every day of the week. 
Now this is huge when it, when you get hit with one of these downtimes. Those downtimes, we feel like I don't know for everybody because everyone's different, but I know for me, my default, and I have to fight it every single day when I'm having struggles. I just want to stay in bed. I hate to say it, but that's that's the honest truth. Trying trying to get out of bed sometimes can be really difficult when I was going through my layoffs, when, when I have missed success club, you know, I'd like to get on here and say, yeah, I've been success club 10 for, for five years. Hasn't been the case. There are days where you have to just do it, but you have to look at, okay, where am I having those struggles? Where did I fall down on those those days that I could have made a difference. That is the, that's where your power comes in, those struggles, learning from those struggles and really growing from those struggles. Review what went wrong, document, and take action. The action is really the key thing that's going to get you out of those dark places. So we really do have two choices when these things happen. Bad things happen. How I respond to them define my character and the quality of my life. I can choose to sit in perpetual sadness, immobilized by the gravity of my loss, or I can choose to rise from the pain and treasure the most precious gift I have, life itself. And that's really what it comes down to is what am I going to do? What choice do I have? Do I stay in bed or do I get out and take action to make sure that I am getting out of, out of the place that I am? One of my favorite quotes, and I don't know where it came from and I'm probably misquoting it, but if you ever feel like you're in hell, all you can do is take another step because if you don't keep moving forward, you're just going to stay there. So, so how do we do it? <laughs> We're going to keep it simple. We've got to keep everything simple. And it really is the one thing that every top coach is going to tell you. It is the three, the three vital behaviors. Invite, invite, invite. The action is really where we are at. Inviting is going to get us out, get us back into the, that repetition of going out and doing it. Make sure that you have a contact list that has phone numbers and emails. If you're relying on Facebook or Instagram, hey, here's my followers, here's the people that like my page, Here's my friend list. If you're just relying on that and you're not making notes and you don't have follow-ups with them scheduled, then you're not, you're not doing what you need to do to be successful. Make sure that you're, you continue doing your workout. I don't know how many times I've talked to team members or coaches or you've heard the top coaches say, when I have a team member or coach, not performing or whatnot, we ask them, are you drinking your Shakeology? Are you doing your workouts? And they use, are you doing your self-development? And it's usually, no, I'm not doing those things. And where those things are involved, if you're doing them, you will be successful. It is very simple to keep this going. Then lastly, self-development. I cannot stress how important this is making sure that you are reading something or listening to something every day. Take that time at least 15 minutes a day, if not an hour. I can tell you I have, a, I have how many books here? I have Audible constantly going because those are the things that keep you in the right mindset. My wife with her Lyme disease, she doesn't like to get out. Um, like I said, we were both very homebodies. We didn't get out and I and I encourage her to listen to stuff and she's like but listening to that stuff isn't going to change me 
And it might not change you on the first time you listen to something, but whether you're listening to um, Tony Robbins or you're listening to, uh, oh man, they're escaping my, my, my mind right now. All of these guys, Darren Hardy, um, John C. Maxwell, they all have common themes. And when you listen to that, the first time it might not hit you, the second time it might not, the third, fourth, whatever it is, you keep going. And that is going to put you in because what you read, what you say to yourself is how you're successful. So make sure that you're doing those, that self-development. So, so important. Now, now lastly, the, the one thing that I love about Beachbody is the, the stories because you might have heard it, you might not have heard it. Stories sell, facts tell. And this next slide here, I can tell you, the first super, or the first um, summit I went to, I saw this person here. She, her name is Sherry uh, Strang, and I had to go up and ask her, because it was my first Super Saturday, and I knew I had to get out of my shell. It was immensely scary. I, I, could, I couldn't tell you how hard it was for me to do this, but I went up and I said, excuse me, I don't know you, but I see you over here. I see you with your coaches, and I just wanted to ask you why. You know, what is your why? Why are you here at Summit? And she's all, because I need to get out of my mindset. I've had a brain injury. I, have, I don't have the use of my, my arm and one of my legs. So this is Sherry. She is on the cruise right now. She's down 70 pounds. She has 80 to go. And she has been 55 months of success club. She's a lifetime uh, diamond coach, an all-star legend. <clears throat> and next month, she'll be an all-star 10 legend, which means she's made all success club 10 for, a, for, uh, for 24 months. She has full use of one arm and one leg. She has had to modify everything. She's had procedure on her hips and shoulders. She has more procedures that are still ongoing. She has obstacles. We all have obstacles. As she puts it, we're all Crayola crayons. Some of us are broken, but we can all still write. It's, it's helping others despite of those obstacles that is going to tell us and who is going to be successful. This is about who we are celebrate. This is about celebrating who we are and the people that we are committed to helping. Do not be ashamed of who you are, the troubles you're having, and the really not being perfect because you will have those down days and letting people know that that's okay and that there is another day and that you're still alive and you're still on your journey is the most important thing. So with that, I know I don't have a, a whole lot of uh, action plans for, for you guys. Um, I am going to open it up to, to questions. Please take yourself off mute um, if you have any questions. I, I anything that anything from anybody. <laughs> hey, Greg. This is Kapi. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to say thank you for sharing your story and just being so vulnerable. And, you know, reminding us that, you know, even though things may look 
perfect on the outside that you're still facing the struggles and you're still showing up every day. That was really awesome that you shared that. And I think, and it's for me, it, it was one of the most inspiring parts about, about this, this entire amazing call. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for that. I, I appreciate uh, the comment. You know, it really is, you know, when I started with uh, Team Engage, we had, what, uh, on the Facebook page, there were, there were eight of us. So it's grown a little bit since I've been around. Uh, May, May 1st will be five years for me. And uh, I can say comments like that really make it uh, meaningful. So if you, if you just keep going, you know, you'll have that person that says, it won't, for me, it was, it's still a little bit unreal when someone said, thank you, Greg, I couldn't have lost the 70 pounds without you. And I was like, I didn't do anything. I was just here. And that's all you have to do is just be there. It, it is amazing. So, so I am going to challenge you guys with one thing before we end the call. Um, and that is, I want you all to go through and re-evaluate your why. Even if you've been a coach for a, a month, a week, just re-look at it. And look at it and see, what can this do for my life? What can it do for my family? What can it do for me personally on a, an emotional, a physical, a mental, and even a spiritual level? I can tell you that I am a different person in all of those areas because of what Beachbody has done to get me out of my, my comfort zone. So with that, um, thank you so much, everybody, for for getting on the call. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Good job. Yes. Thanks, Greg. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good night. Thank you guys you. have a great one as thank well. You. <laughs>